Deep in the English countryside, the grand interiors of National Trust properties seem a world away from an extreme clean in Enfield. But the lavish and highly valuable furnishings can pose problems of their own. The National Trust also has to preserve priceless collections of books. This afternoon at Stourhead in Wiltshire, book restorer Caroline is giving a masterclass on how to clean and care for these treasured possessions. I was always the librarian at school for some reason and I think that I've always enjoyed reading. I think the practical nature of my uh, craft and working with books was something that um, came together very nicely for me. Caroline's main concern is dust and she has an ingenious way of dealing with it. So I need to turn the vacuum cleaner on. We try and contain the dirt so that um, we're not spreading it over the collection. And I'm using a pony hair brush, which is soft enough not to cause abrasion, but it's actually very powerful and removes the dirt very successfully. Cleaning books is a special skill. I hold the book down into this, this, this very basic dusting box and brush from the spine towards the foredge of the book. And then I brush down the foredge and then along the tail of the book. And then I brush the boards and then the spine of the book this one has got raised bands on it, so I will have to brush this one going across the spine because uh, the dust collects on the raised bands. And it's not only dust that can do the damage. We have a range of insects that eat books. Um, we have death watch beetle, furniture beetle, carpet beetle, spider beetles, moths and silverfish are the ones that really cause damage. Occasionally also we get rodent damage. But very often the rodent damage is like the sort of contour lines on a map. And we can see on this book um, where the paper's been eaten away to, to make a nest. But we all know what the real problem is. Bookworms. I suppose the bug that everybody thinks of being in books is the bookworm, which there isn't such a thing in the insect kingdom, but it's the furniture beetle larvae, the woodworm, that tends to burrow through the book. Um, its larger cousin, the death watch beetle, also creates rather large holes in books, but the, the general insect that people think of as eating books is the, is the woodworm. At Stourhead in Wiltshire, the volunteer book cleaners are deep into their second day and it's time for the course leader, Caroline, to set them a test. Where do I start the brush strokes from, remember? So back to front, I think. Absolutely right, so, so far, 10 out of 10. Every book, and in many cases, every page has to be dusted and inspected. Every single blemish has to be noted. We found some worm damage here, where the worm has come in. It has also got a little hole there, probably where he did enter the book and it goes all the way through the book as a neat little hole. They can see if the insect damage has got any worse over time, and if necessary, the books can be treated. Bottom of the backboard, there's so damage, here. damage there yeah. as well. Yeah. Reading all these books would take long enough, but cleaning them takes even longer. Roughly about every three to four years, the whole library will have to be cleaned, yeah. which does take it took us nearly 18 months last time to do the complete library. These volunteers love the work. This book was published in 1750. They've got um, some originals of Thomas Hardy here. It's respect, you feel great respect about it. Well, I do anyway. I suppose it's always been a bit of an obsession and um, this is brilliant. It's almost heaven for me to see uh, a library like this. And, you know, I feel that what we're doing is, is really worthwhile, very valuable. I think it's an honour, really do. Never judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm.